Hey, what's up everybody? We're gonna do some quick practice using Vesper theory to determine the shapes of different molecules. Now, as you take a look at your notes, the very first thing you wanna do when working with Vesper theory is draw the Lewis structure for your molecule. Let's work through those steps first. All right, we've got CO2 as our Lewis structure. Again, our first step, determine total number of valence electrons in the molecule contributed from each element. Carbon is gonna contribute four valence electrons each. Oxygen is gonna contribute six. Boom. I got one atom of carbon, so a total of four valence electrons coming from my carbon. I've got two atoms of oxygen, each contributing six, so I've got 12 total valence electrons coming from my oxygen atoms. In total for the molecule, I simply add my valence electrons coming from carbon, and my valence electrons coming from oxygen. 16 total valence electrons. Step two, divide my total number of electrons by two to get the number of electron pairs available. In this case, eight pairs of valence electrons available. Step three, build a skeletal structure by choosing a central atom and surrounding it by the remaining atoms. Remember, your element with the lowest electronegativity is gonna be your central atom. This time, it's a little trickier because I don't have hydrogen. I go to my periodic table. I compare electronegativities of carbon and oxygen. Carbon is the less electronegative. Keep in mind though, when you're using just a standard periodic table, you have to remember the trend in electronegativity. Recognize that your less electronegative elements are gonna be more towards the left and the bottom of your periodic table. All right, so we've decided that carbon is gonna be my central atom. I'm gonna surround it by my remaining atoms, in this case, my two oxygens. Step four, place a pair of electrons between the central atom and each of the terminal atoms. Again, recognize I've color-coded here so that you can remember that one of those electrons is coming from the central atom and one from the terminal. I subtract the number of pairs used, in this case, just two, I've got six pairs left over. Oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Well, just keep in mind, if you've got pairs left over, the first place you're gonna to try to assign them are those terminal atoms. In this case, they will accept additional electrons because I'm trying to get them to an octet. I'm gonna give each of my terminal atoms three pairs of electrons. Notice that that gives each of them an octet, or eight electrons total. I've used up six pairs, I have no pairs left. As I think about this Lewis structure, it's not quite correct. Because even though I was able to get an octet to each of my terminal oxygen atoms, notice that my carbon central atom only has four. I don't have any pairs left to give my central carbon atom. So what do we do in a situation like this? Here's where we create double and triple bonds. We're gonna take a lone pair from one of our terminal atoms and make it share that additional pair. Now, if I just did one pair of electrons, that would give my central carbon atom six electrons total. So I'm gonna end up sharing two pairs of electrons. Now, ultimately, recognize that two of those electrons were always carbons to start with. This stepwise system is just a way for you to always end up with the correct Lewis structure. Again, a couple of Venn diagrams to help you recognize which electrons are being shared and to make sure that each of the elements has an octet. In this case, everybody's got an octet. Don't forget though, you can represent those shared pairs of electrons using dashes. Note that this time, I've placed two dashes in between the carbon and each oxygen, indicating a double bond. Okay, so I have drawn the Lewis structure for my molecule of carbon dioxide. Now the question becomes, what shape do the electrons have and what shape does the molecule have? Now, to help you better visualize this, I'm gonna use this simulation. I've got my central carbon atom in purple here and I'm gonna add two of my double bonded oxygens. Now, it's important to note there are no lone pairs on my central atom in carbon dioxide. And as you think about this, my two regions of electron density are gonna wanna get as far away from one another as possible. And because I only have two regions of electron density, the furthest they can get away from one another is 180 degrees. 
So the electron geometry here is 180 degrees. The molecular geometry, or the geometry of the atoms, is also linear. And the molecular geometry and the electron geometry will be the same anytime that your central atom has no lone pairs of electrons. Now, you don't get a nifty simulation on the test. So it's just gonna take some practice with a reference chart like the one in your notes to help you get comfortable with what the different geometries are gonna be.